that explosives were used for the collapse of Building 7. In the 1960s, when the towers went up, they were revolutionary. A project of this size created enormous challenges. The problem with skyscrapers before then was that they were crowded by a grid of steel columns to keep them up. The trade center would be different. All columns would be shifted to a central core with the elevators and stairs and to the building's outer skin. Those were structural members. They actually held up uh, about half of the weight of the building. The outer columns were made from prefab steel pieces, lifted into place and bolted together. 59 columns on each side, 283 columns in all, reaching 1,360 feet into the sky. The floors were concrete, held up by steel trusses underneath. They linked the outer skin to the inner core. So the towers were spacious inside and sturdy on the outside. From a structural engineering perspective, those, those buildings were magnificent. In retrospect, would it have been different had there been more supporting beams in a, you know, in a, in a greater area around this, around this building? Well, frankly, it's hard to imagine a, a building having more steel than this structure. Uh, the whole time you hear, zoom, 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 zoom. I think I know an explosion when I hear it. And uh, the whole time you hear him thum, 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 thum. up West Broadway looking toward the World Trade Center in the distance. Ashley Banfield was conducting an interview for MSNBC. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your... The mic um, was set to pick up speech a few inches away. Yes. Um, From the involuntary the startle response, have... oh my God. we know explosions are being heard. However, listening closely, we discover that the microphone did indeed pick up the sounds of explosions, but very faintly. Turn up the volume. Listen for a low rumble in the background. You were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. This time, the sound has been filtered to emphasize low frequencies. Listen for booms like a bass drum in the distance. Um, in fact, you were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, here's a different version filtered to emphasize the mid-range sounds the bass drum is gone i would describe the blast sound like a train on a bumpy track you were just uh told by police that you should move out of your um apartment fabiana yes. you've got carolina here yes um they they advise us to leave because we have oh my god here's the original sound again you were just uh, told by police that you should move out of your um, apartment, Fabiana. Yes. You've got Carolina here. Yes. Um, they, they advise us to leave because we have... Oh, my God. Look behind us. Please pan in this way. Please be careful of your baby. This is it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. No. If you didn't hear the blasts, back up, use earphones, turn up the volume, and listen again. There were two blasts, followed by seven more, regularly spaced all in two and a half seconds. Craig Bartmer's testimony may come to mind. Uh, the whole time you hear him, thum, 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 thum. I think I know an explosion when I hear it. <laughs> when we hear the sharp, regular series of sounds in the background, the building has not yet started to fall. When we hear the reporters say, this is it, this is it, the building has not yet started to fall. The fall of the building corresponds to the crescendo in the crowd response. 
Here is another street scene with the building in full view. The crowd responds almost immediately as the building starts to fall. This occurs just after the reporter says, this is it. This is it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Therefore, oh the blasts God. we heard occurred seconds before the building started to fall. When Ashley Banfield says, this is it, it is because she has been previously told to expect Building 7 to come down. The brown building, the tall one, is number 7 World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. Back in the studio, the anchor, Brian Williams, not only had foreknowledge of the collapse, he had a ready explanation. What we've been fearing all afternoon has apparently happened. We were watching number 7 World Trade, which was part of the ancillary damage of the uh, explosion and collapse of the other two. Just as Ashley Banfield was told, Brian Williams was told, there is indeed evidence that even the top fire officials were told. We are on the phone with uh, New York Fire Department Lieutenant uh, David Restuccio. Lieutenant, where are you right now? I'm at the corner of Norm Northmore Street and Greenwich Street. Can you confirm it was number seven that just went in? Yes, sir. Uh, and you were you guys knew this was coming all day. We had been had we had heard reports that the building was unstable and that it eventually would either come down on its own or it would be taken down. any evidence that explosives were used in the collapse of Building 7. Yet there was voluminous evidence of explosions. Uh, here's one of the guys who can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want to oh. call, call your mother or something? You heard explosions, like boom. We just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. Craig Bartmer was a policeman who was near Building 7 as it started to come down. It was nothing I would ever imagine seeing in my life, you know, the... In fact, the World Trade Center's original engineers had even done calculations to see what would happen if a Boeing 707, a slightly smaller aircraft than the 767s involved in 9-11, struck the building by accident. And they concluded that if an aircraft hit, that the buildings would not collapse, that they would be able to take that hit and stand up. We had designed the project for the impact of the our largest airplane of its time, the, the Boeing 707. That is to take this jet airplane, run it into the building, destroy a lot of structure, and still have it stand up. Well, 13,000 tons is a lot of force. Uh, people always talk about an airplane crashing into a building. And in 1944 or 45, a plane did crash into the Empire State Building. But the largest aircraft flying today, at least commercially, the 747, fully loaded, is on the order of 300 tons. So if you think about a 300 ton element crashing into a building that's been designed to carry 13,000 tons, you can see that an aircraft crashing into the World Trade Center would probably not do anything to the major building. It could affect localized structural elements, could knock out a column, and there could be some, some damage. But as far as a plane knocking a building over of that type, that the building probably could sustain multiple impacts of jetliners because this structure is like the mosquito netting on your screen door, this intense grid. 
and the jet plane is just a pencil puncturing that screen netting. It really does nothing to the screen netting. He's in the explosion. He's in the lobby and then fucking this, the third explosion, the whole lobby collapsed on us. What was it like? What was it like? Horrible. It's like hell. You don't the want to know. The whole building just collapsed on us inside the lobby. Is that a secondary explosion? Yes, it was. That was so the... Was yeah, definitely secondary explosion. Because we was inside waiting to go upstairs. And on our way upstairs, the whole fucking thing blew. And we just, we just collapsed on everybody inside the lobby. So these people that understand, there. there may be more. Any know, one of these fucking buildings can blow up. This, this ain't done yet. How does this... this, is, this yeah, here's one of the guys who can tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You want, oh. call your, you want to call your mother or something? after the attack, many smaller explosions rumbled through downtown. Because once the tower fell, you heard boom, 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 boom. And we heard this boom, boom, boom. They were planned to yeah. take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. So it's like boom, 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 like that. And then it started to sound like firecrackers. Yes. All of a sudden, it was like bang, 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 like bullet shots, and then all of a sudden, three tremendous explosions. Explosions taking place in that building. Was con there were continuous explosions. Uh, we're we're hearing a number of large booms coming from that area. We can only guess what is going on. See, I got uh, an eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor seven eight. Seven eight. Where do you think this time? We just had another explosion. Warren Street, because of the secondary explosion, we've got numerous people covered with dust from the secondary explosion. And we got another. Explosion on the tower, 1013, 1013, there were two, and then a major explosion, and what appears to be a complete collapse surrounding the entire area. Explosion involved in the secondary uh, explosion. Top, Seriously, and the lobby looked as though a bomb had exploded there. And it's, uh, all the glass was taken out. There were 10 foot by 10 foot uh, marble panels that were once walls. Uh, uh, they were loose from the from the wall of the trade center. I went around by the freight elevator and I could see it was just blown. It was just a, a giant 30th floor. We hear another explosion. I think a bomb went off in the lobby first, then a plane hit the building. <coughs> then we got downstairs. We got to the fourth floor from 82nd floor. And all of a sudden it was this big explosion. I don't know if like everything was, went just good. like what you just seen. That's what we went through before we came out of the building. Then when we get out the building, then the We ran down the steps to the lobby. There was no lobby. Everything was uh, torn up. And even the turnstile was burnt and was sticking up. And they just told us to run. My boss ran out of the office. He said one thing, run. Everybody just ran. And we ran down the stairs. They told us to come back up the stairs. And we were like, come back up the stairs. Are you crazy? So we continued down the stairs. We came outside in the lobby. There was no lobby. The lobby was totally gone. Did you see other people? People. There was a woman there with her face blown off. And as we were coming out, we passed the lobby. There was no lobby. So I believe the, the bomb hit the lobby first. And a couple of seconds in the first plane a bit of trouble right now maintaining our location because we just heard one more explosion that's about the fourth one we've heard the police are telling us they're FBI is
guys here, as you can see, they had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. Stunning. I'm still hearing like little explosions all around, like around my block, but I don't know what's really going on. But um, just little like, little like dooms. That one of the explosions at the World Trade Center, aside from the ones that may have been caused by the impact of the plane with the building, may have been caused by a van. And that basically he received word of the possibility of a secondary device that is another bomb going off uh, he tried to get his men out as quickly as he could but he said that there was another explosion which took place and then an hour after the first hit here with the first crash that took place he said uh, there was another explosion that took place uh, in one of the towers here uh, so obviously, he, according to his theory, he thinks that there were actually devices that were planted in the building. I was walking to work and all of a sudden I see a jet crash into the first tower and two minutes later an explosion which a whole bunch of people, including myself, fell on this side of the sidewalk. reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted, whether in fact there wasn't something else at the base of the towers that in fact were the coup de grace to bring them to the ground. Well, we have a number of updates. Number one, um, CNN is now reporting that there was a third explosion at the World Trade Center, probably an explosion from the ground. And um, more smoke rising from the ground, uh, new smoke. So there was some kind of a additional explosion, but I don't know. people in the moment we heard a big explosion coming down everything just went black everything came down glass are popping and people got hurt stuff went on top of them and it was a big explosion and everything got dark real dark come down the steps everything fine till we got to the basement and everything just fell in uh, i got trapped in there when another guy crawled out kept getting hit in the head had bags all around finally we clawed our way out over the road yeah come on get all right all right way to be down. tom let's go sudden I opened the door I didn't know it was a bathroom and all of a sudden a big impact happened again and all the ceiling tile was falling down the light fixtures were falling swinging out of the ceiling and I come running out the door and everything the walls were down and now I started running towards the parking lots hit us to the floor right in the basement you felt it walls were caving in everything that was going on I, I mean I know of people that got killed in the basement. I know of people that got broken legs in, their, in the basement. People got reconstructed for surgery because the walls hit them in the face. And I know I'm just... Well, we came out on the floor, uh, on the lobby. Uh, there were still people on the floor, uh, uh, dead on the floor. There was a person encrusted on the floor. Plane, ...or whether it was something that was exploded on the ground. Generally speaking, for a building to collapse in on itself like that, it would seem to indicate, obviously this is just early speculation, but it would seem to indicate that there could have been an explosion, a bomb planted on the ground. Then a fourth explosion rocks the debris. Collapsing about eight minutes after that, a fourth explosion at the World Trade Center, perhaps at the base of the building. All of a sudden you hear explosion, 
and then you could see the building starting to collapse. <laughs> The mayor only saying he did not believe those blasts after the initial impact had anything to do with a gas leak. That was an initial report from the mayor. It What's so frightening at this time is that we've heard three explosions since both towers collapsed. Below the fire, I saw from the corner, boom, 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 boom. Just like 20 straight hits just went down and then I just... <laughs> second building it you saw an explosion and then you just saw the a humongous cloud of smoke go up and you saw the building start to fall down and then you saw the core of the building just start to disintegrate into itself i had heard the uh, a boom and the and the ground tremble and uh, the next thing i know i'm looking up uh, at the uh, roof and i'm seeing stuff coming off the roof I figured my best bet would be to get back into the building so uh, to avoid the stuff coming off the roof. I know as soon as I had gone back into the revolving door when, uh, and the next thing I know is a major explosion of which I'm now thrown back out through both of these, uh, through the revolving door and back outside underneath the overhang where the taxis would come in. I literally thought the subway had exploded and, and all the cars were pissing land on top of us. It was so loud. And what you do? Sure. And then I walked past a subway station and went after three blocks we could finally see. And I saw these people coming out of the subway. And it, it, they were worse off than we were. It looked like a bag of cement had just been poured all over them. And I, I was asking around, what happened? What, because we didn't know. Was there a bomb in our building? Did a, we were right across the street from a federal building. So I assumed that's what got hit. Mm -hmm. And then the woman from the subway goes, no, the bomb was in the subway. We all thought we were right in the center of the bomb. This was the result of something that was planned. This is not, it's not accidental that the first tower just happened to collapse and then the second tower just happened to collapse in exactly the same way. No matter how many times you hit the eight ball, the cue ball always slows down. No matter how many times you hit the nail, the hammer always slows down. And it doesn't matter if it's an elastic collision like that cue ball or an inelastic collision where they stick together like these toy cars. The object that does the hitting always slows down. It also doesn't matter if the object is broken down into smaller pieces, as the speed of the object hitting all the pieces always slows down. Conservation of momentum is a fundamental law of physics that cannot be broken. So what do the fundamental laws of physics have to do with the events of 9-11? Everything. 
Most people don't realize that World Trade Centers 1, 2, and 7 did not slow down when they fell. Careful measurements, such as this one by David Chandler, clearly indicates that the velocity of the roof of the towers actually sped up. How can this be? The National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, was tasked with investigating the collapse, but they stopped their investigation at the very moment the roof began to fall. By stopping their study early, they never addressed the physics of the actual fall and just assumed that the collapse was inevitable. But in science, one needs to be very careful when making such bold assumptions. Instead, NIST relies on the work of Professor Pazant and others with their collapse analysis. To explain the energy needed, their hypothesis relies on the notion that the upper block physically crushed the lower concrete floors into dust. They claim the upper, smaller block of the tower crushed the larger, lower block down to the ground, and then the upper block finally crushed itself. In addition, they state that a simultaneous crush down of the tower and crush up of the upper falling block is impossible. But independent analysis refutes the official hypothesis because we do not observe a deceleration or jolt which is necessary to crush the concrete below. In addition, any block that is dropped on a larger block of the same material would in turn also destroy itself well before it could destroy all of the larger block below. Newton's third law of motion says that for every force there is an opposite but equal force. So any force imparted by a falling block striking a lower block must also impart the same force on the upper block. What the independent studies are really saying is that there is only one mechanism that could cause an accelerating roof, and that is if some outside force, such as explosives, remove the supports below first, allowing the roof to speed up. Obviously, both hypotheses cannot be correct, so how can we tell who's right? By conducting some experiments, the arbitrator of opposing hypotheses. Richard Feynman was a brilliant physicist and a member on the panel that investigated the Challenger disaster, who conducted a simple experiment using ice water to demonstrate the effect of temperature on a piece of the shuttle's seal. He said, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. Let's observe some simple experiments to help resolve the following questions. Does the upper block of material slow down or speed up when it hits the lower block? Can the upper block destroy a lower block of the same material without destroying itself in the process? And can the crush down of a lower part be simultaneous with the crush up of the upper part? In order to control the direction of the falling blocks, I built a frame guide rail system out of aluminum angle that was slightly larger than my test blocks. My first material was ice. Raising the top block, I let it fall on the lower block and observe the results. The first thing I observed is that the top block decelerates very rapidly. The second thing observed is that both the upper and lower ice block disintegrated in part each time it hit the lower mass. The ice was difficult to completely break, taking over 100 drops to reduce its size, which is why only excerpts of this video is shown here. Eventually, the upper block broke to such a small piece that it was no longer usable. The lower block was broken about the same distance. However, most of the lower block remained intact. A weak mix of mortar was poured into forms and cured for approximately one day. Using the same guide rails, the top block of mortar was dropped onto the larger lower block. Just like the ice block drop, the top block decelerated the moment it hit the lower mass. The lower block did not shatter, but rather slowly chipped off at about the same rate as the upper block. I continued to drop the upper block many times, and again, the video is truncated for brevity. The lower block was so fragile that it cracked in half when I slid it out to observe the progress, making it even weaker for the top block to crush. Nevertheless, it still took over 60 drops to demolish the upper block, and similar to the ice block, 
the upper block destroyed itself before the lower one was completely destroyed. Both towers held the upper block of floors for about one hour after the planes hit, meaning the total equivalent supporting force must be equal to the downward weight of the floors. The goal of the next experiment is to see if a force that can initially support a static load can also cause the same falling load to noticeably slow down when dropped. A wood block was gently wedged so that it just barely held the upper block in the static condition. Raising the block and dropping it, you can clearly see that the block decelerated as it hit the support, indicating that a deceleration will be noticed by a falling body by any equivalent force that could support the static weight. Next, I constructed a much larger guide rail system in order to guide a falling hollow concrete block onto a stack of four similar concrete blocks. The goal was to see if the concrete block falling would crush the lower four hollow blocks before it crushed itself and to see if it would continually accelerate with the accreting mass. The concrete block was raised to the 12 foot mark, equivalent to the floor spacing on the twin towers, and then let go. The falling block decelerated rapidly after it hit the lower stack and destroyed both the falling block and the top block virtually simultaneously. However, it did not destroy the lower three blocks. The test was repeated with the same blocks, only this time the holes in the blocks were alternated 90 degrees to each other. Similar results were observed. Finally, some very small weak half blocks were used. The results were identical, however, due to the lack of support from the guide rails they tipped over, but not until after they yielded the same results. The next three experiments are real-world examples intended to see if, indeed, as NIST simply assumed, a collapse would be inevitable. Will the collapse of these structures continue to accelerate? And is collapse really inevitable? Based on these three real-world examples, an accelerated, straight-down collapse of the structures certainly is not inevitable. These are simple experiments, but like Feynman's ice water used for the space shuttle, they demonstrate fundamental laws that will not be fooled by the so-called experts, even with all their funding and fancy equations. What was demonstrated by this experiment is, one, any upper block of material must slow down when it hits any mass or force that previously supported it. Two, the upper block of a falling structure will destroy itself well before it can possibly crush the entire larger lower block. Three, the crush down of the lower block can be virtually simultaneous to the crush up of the falling block. The fact that the upper block of the World Trade Center was observed to speed up cannot be explained with a natural gravitational collapse. What you are observing are rapidly timed explosives blowing out the supporting structure, allowing the roof line to accelerate. Explosives also account for all other evidence found, such as the eutectic steel found by FEMA, the iron microspheres found by the USGS, and the high explosive active nanothermite found in a dust, none of which was addressed by NIST. Perhaps there are experiments that support the official hypothesis that match what we observed, but I cannot think of one. There is no sense trying to support the official position with words until such time as a repeatable experiment that clearly demonstrates what we observed can be presented. Since the experiments does not match the Byzant hypothesis, it's wrong. NIST assumption that the towers collapse was inevitable is also wrong. The controlled demolition hypothesis is the only one that can be supported by experiment using the scientific method. Always remember the thousands of people that were intentionally murdered that day and the unnatural acceleration of the towers that defy the laws of physics without assistance from explosives the next time you hit a nail with your hammer or play a game of pool.